Hey, what's poppin' people? It's my birthday. So tough with that bad boy talk. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Mm. That's right. It's a cool heat changing mug from a Game Boy. Yes, a birthday present. I'm 35 today. I know what you're thinking. Yan, you couldn't be a day over 24. I'm 35. 35 today. So, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who's wished me a happy birthday on the community tab here on Football Therapy and indeed on social media. It's very kind of you, but you know what? This channel isn't about me. It's about, it's about Chelsea. Uh, and today, this is Chelsea News. Not in the office today, back at the desk here. Largely because it is my birthday and I want to chill out a little bit. And a lot of you guys like this relaxed sort of uh, almost podcast-like format. So here we are, back here having a coffee together. I'm brimmed to the top with uh, sugary foods um, because it's the day of birth. But I do want to speak about um, Nizar Kinsella's article on the Evening Standard about both this new set piece coach, of course, that everyone's talking about. Uh, Bernardo Cueva, I believe he is, from Brent Food, and as well, Thiago Silva, um, you know, leaving Chelsea, maybe becoming a coach, and how I would personally love Thiago Silva to become a coach at Chelsea, because he loves the club, his wife loves the club, uh, both his kids play for Chelsea, um, he would have to learn English, of course, fluently, but he's doing his um, the B license at the moment, and I just want to talk about that a little bit, <clears throat> so... Thank you for joining me, gang. Uh, if you want to wish me a happy birthday, drop a like on the video. That's a nice way. <laughs> Showing that you like the content as well. And as always, you're welcome to subscribe. And should you choose to do so, hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. All right, mate. <clears throat> Let's get into it. So we're going to start. Uh, we're going to chip our way through Nizar's article. Uh, they wrote, wrote yesterday and uh, talk about it a little bit because he writes this. Pochettino says Chelsea veteran Thiago Silva can learn what it takes to be a coach by coaching a dressing room half his age. The legendary Brazilian defender turns 40 in September and is beginning to think about life beyond playing football. After starting his UEFA B license last month as Standard Sport first revealed earlier this year. Um, yeah, yeah, was it yesterday's video we spoke about Pochettino talking about how some players didn't sleep before the final? More additional reminders that, you know, the playing personnel that he is dealing with, or indeed another coach would have to deal with should Chelsea replace him. It is it is kids. It's kids that still freak out and uh, behave in ways that they just do until they have more experience. It's so unique, isn't it? For the first time ever, we have a 39 <clears throat> in the Premier League area, 39 slash 40 year old outfield player, like super old, in a regime where we play infants. Some peculiar irony there. Uh, so Nizar goes on to write Silva has also received, uh, excuse me, recently hinted he could leave uh, when his contract expires at the end of the season. Well, I think we pretty much all are expecting that at this point. While his wife, Bell Sister, of course, Bell Sister, Bell Silva, sparked controversy, of course, when she said the need for change tweets, ch -ch -ch changes. Everyone's sort of um, having a bit of fun of that now, saying, well, the changes, they. Your husband has been benched, and I don't think that's the change she wanted. I think she was calling for the coach to be changed. I do wonder how Pochettino took that. I think there was pressure on Pochettino maybe not to drop silver. Uh, I've been sort of calling for... Sounding to drop silver sounds really harsh because he's so good and he cares, but he's just no, not mobile enough, understandably, by the way. Um... You know, when you push 40, you're not going to be able to run like a 20-year-old. You're just not. And the way, um, you know, Premier League teams play at the moment, it's really good to have a high recovery pace, uh, fast recovery pace as a defender. You know, Van Dijk is like, what, 31 or something? And he looks like he's in big trouble sometimes. So I kind of get it. Um... But it's very, very difficult to ask such a... He's not a, He's not like a, a legend, Thiago Silva at Chelsea, because... Um, he's just, you know, he's, he's, he's like, for me, he's under Eden Hazard and Espliqueta, and those two are just under, like, the old guard, like your Lampard and JTs, but in terms of, uh, Thiago Silva, he's like a cult hero for me, do you know what I mean? I'm sure there'll be other examples of cult heroes, like, is Zola a legend, or is Zola a cult hero? We also, I mean, we signed Zola, 
when he was years younger than Tiago Silva, but growing up in my head, I was like, yeah, we signed Zola when he was well old, you know, like when he was like 30. But, um, you know, obviously, since then, we signed older players that did really well as well, like Giroud, Tiago Silva, etc. So interesting. When did we re sign David Luiz? I think he was 29, actually, when we re signed him. Uh, anyway, let's read on. However, Pochettino insists Silva is getting a lot out of one of uh, these difficult seasons in his, illustri- in his illustrious career and can learn about coaching with such a young group. Um, he says this, no, it's a good experience for him. And the kids also, if he wants to be a coach, he is experiencing a very good time. When I say, when, he, when he says he is experiencing a very good time, I don't think Pochettino is suggesting sitting on the bench for a mid-table club is experiencing a good time. And again, this is the second language thing. I think he's like inferring like, this is a good experience for these young players as an older player, if you want to become a coach in, in testing in developmental times. I think that's what he means. So Pochettino also explained why Silva spent the last few weeks on the bench. He says this. He got injured against Palace. And then after that, we, when he was available to play, Chalabar was performing well. That, and that's it. It's the only decision to play one or the other. I agree with you. We need to respect everyone. And he has my respect 100%. I think he'll actually play tomorrow. Um, only we choose, and before it was Axel de Sassi and Levi Colwell, and now even he's been injured, of course Colwell's injured. Even for Levi, if he comes back tomorrow, I could decide to play with Chalaba because he's playing well. Yes, yeah, the same with the goalkeeper as well. Um, you know, uh, Sanchez got injured. He was sort of like, okay, wasn't he, when he got injured? He, he had bad moments, but he was okay for you know a cheap signing from Brighton. And then Georgia Petrovic came in, um, for, for when Sanchez was injured and now he's number one it's just what happens so you know I think actually what um this is what the guys on the athletic podcast say the straight out common podcast uh, that I actually came at a good time Thiago Silva's injury because it, it gave Pochettino like the political licensing to drop him and um and then you know someone comes in and does well and you keep him dropped so I think that almost did Poch a favor there He goes on to say, for me, it's about performing and deserving to play. It's not about the name or the experience or because he's a legend or not a legend. Of course, Silva is training well now and is waiting for his chance to play. Um, Silva is one of just the three Chelsea players still at the club who featured, of course, in the 21 Cup final against Leicester, which we lost with that Tielemans super goal. And of course, we play them tomorrow Pochettino admits that such a statistic is a sign of Chelsea's inexperience and a reason why they failed to win last month's Carabao Cup final um yes so I think he's saying look the fact how it's only like silver and a couple of players since that other cup final it shows the inexperience and how new everything is um, it was Ben Chilwell, Thiago and Reese James, he said, gesturing to the three players before explaining the players that have the same process of settling into the club and performing. Yes, we are in a process in which, of course, the main group, the main young players, of course, they struggle a bit to deal with the pressure to play for Chelsea. And I've said this before, like, I totally get it. You know, I get why Nico Jackson, you know, on a, after a disappointing result, post loads of pictures on his social media stories, his Instagram stories of him scoring because he scored a Premier League goal. You know, you know, if Drogba was around today or social media was around with our golden generation, Lampard said it, they just wouldn't post about it. If they didn't win, they'd be they wouldn't want any pictures of them on the training ground. Lampard joked about sticking his middle finger up so they wouldn't be able to use it on social media. They don't want to see you know, they wanna they're not gonna be smiley and happy unless they've won. That was the mentality. But we haven't got that at the moment. And, you know, like I said, I use, I'm i using Nico Jackson as an example because I think it's a good example. Like, uh, you know, he was playing as a winger for Villarreal last season. Suddenly he's Chelsea. Chelsea, you know, massive Chelsea. He's their starting number nine. And he scored a goal for them in the Premier League. He's a young guy. It's hella exciting, you know. But this is where we're at. And you, you can have a go at the decision to bring this kind of young players in. But like I said recently, it's the idea is front-loading the pain in development so it pays dividends later. R- even though even though the ownership, the sporting directors and everyone, certainly the fan base, will be disappointed with how we've underperformed in points and wins. You know, so it's very, very uh, tricky. Um, 
So quickly, I just before we move on and Potch's comments, I did want to just quickly talk about uh, Thiago Silva because I'd love him to stay at Chelsea. I know there was talks of him going back to Brazil for one season and playing for his club out there, but I'd love it him just his kids are settled, his kids are happy, Bell seems happy. Just stay. You know, if you're not training for football anymore at like Chelsea every day, and because he's so studious, and Frank Lampard said this so many times about Thiago Silva, he, he's got amazing recovery, hence him being able to play for so long. Like, he does all the ch- cryo chamber stuff, yoga. He does so much tactics and additional extracurricular analysis himself. He's an amazing role model in that sense. So if he's not playing anymore, he's got a lot of time. Learn English. Just learn English fluently. I've I joked about it before that he got to Chelsea in his mid 30s. He was like 35, 36. The dude speaks, you know, Brazilian Portuguese. He speaks Italian. He speaks French all fluently. I imagine he's got quite a good command of Spanish as well. And I think he just got to England and he was like, screw this, I ain't learning English from scratch. Like, I think, do you know what I mean? Like, I think he was just like, I can't be asked. I've learned all these languages. You'd think it would be easier because he's um got a relatively strong command on Latin, Latin-based languages with, like, French and Italian, but, like, uh, um, I think he was just dedicating all this time to doing well for Chelsea and, obviously, learning basic communications and commands on the pitch, which is, like, all you really need. Like, Diego Costa and Sergio Aguero would tell you that, although, to be honest, they were finishers rather than players on the pitch that need to talk a lot. But for me, I would love him to become a Chelsea coach. Just use your extra time, learn English fluently, um, work for Chelsea, stay at Chelsea, um, you know, maybe get your other licenses, maybe even become one of the developmental coach with your kids. That would be a lovely story. And then imagine like, I mean, the thing is like, you know, we're looking at signing like, well, we've been linked with managers the same age as him and like Ruben Amorim, he's the same age as Thiago Silva. But who knows, maybe in like, six years or something Thiago Silva can become the Chelsea coach you know uh, uh, people will be wary of that ex-players but why not it'll be great to have a legend like that well just called him a legend maybe he is is a legend and not well a footballing legend a Chelsea cult hero I would love that personally anyway let's read on and see what Poch is saying that's the thing because we're aware and we are focusing on trying to help them in all areas I think he's talking about the young players again there because when you have this young squad it's not only to help them in training we spend a lot of time talking talking with the people that work around these guys as well who they're important they're they're important too he's saying hmm so Chelsea's inconsistency has raised the stakes in the domestic cup competitions one, of course, we're out. While we sit uh, 11th in the Prem, solving that problem involves connecting a group of almost entirely new signings, and Pochettino has revealed that he threw his third barbecue of the season. Here we go. Break. It's on like emergency fire alarms. Break glass for emergency Poch barbecue. The idea is to share among the players... Um, All the staff are invited to, he told reporters, there's going to be 120 or 130 people. That is a party. Bottom half of the Premier League table party. The most important thing is that the players understand what it means to be a Chelsea player. See, I like that, you know. It's like the kind of way he spoke when he first was appointed before he started saying, oh yeah, but we're all bad and we're kids, so don't expect anything, you know. Bring a bit of that back. A reminder of what Chelsea is. You know, come on, bro. Like, Pochettino came to Chelsea, lives in southwest London, gets paid loads of money, gets to coach really talented players. I get it, I get it, I get it. But it's still Chelsea. When he was at Tottenham, you know, doing well, you know, he'd get beaten by Chelsea. He'd watch Chelsea win the Premier League. He'd watch Chelsea stop them from winning the Premier League in our worst season when we finished 10th for Eden Hazard. Obviously sandwiched between two league titles, you know. He watched Chelsea go and win the Champions League, um, win the Europa League. It's Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to sound pe- like Pep Guardiola when he goes, it's Chelsea. It's Chelsea. But do you know what I mean? It is. When he's at PSG, his club that can't win the Champions League. And, you know, it's still... Like, when he got there, he was like... You know, imagine when he's managing Tottenham and he didn't have the money that Levy didn't give him and, you know, he didn't have the the players and culture of belief of winning. If you told me, yeah, but you're going to go and manage Chelsea at some point. Not straight from Tottenham because the fans would, you know, probably f- find you in a, with, like, burning torches and a mob. But you'll get there. There's got to be an illustrious allure to him there, not just the money. So it's I do have to. And again, I don't care if Poch gets sacked. 
But whoever manages Chelsea needs to know that this isn't just a high-profile job. This is this is Chelsea. Like people gave Chris Jurassic a hard time, the CEO, about him talking about not being a football fan. I do not give a monkeys about that. We've got head of football sporting directors. Jurassic's been brought in to do financial work, okay, and uh, he's meant to be very good at that. And if he does his job really well and makes Chelsea money wicked i don't care if you're not a massive football fan you're not brought in to be a football fan um but if you're a chelsea manager if you're a football manager you work in football you need to understand what chelsea is so so i realize i've gone off on a massive tangent there um to share with people sometimes you don't see from the office to all be together nice so big big barbecue for pochettino it's not only the training ground where you've got to come to work it's home we want to create a good feeling among everyone to get people to fight for the same feeling to win i do like that and to be honest this is what's supposed to be pochettino it's supposed to be about cultivating a togetherness of an atmosphere and despite a lot that he's done wrong i think he has this season you know the players seem to want to play for him so Whatever you stand on Pochettino, even if you're Poch out, that's totally fine. Um, I think everyone needs to understand that if that happens, it will happen in the summer. So what you can hope for in the meantime is that people are happy and developing and they have to be the hat to develop. And these are expensive assets that we've bought. We don't want to waste a few months until the next season starts. We do as much as we can now. So if they can be friendly, fun, develop together, of course you're going to want that. You, you know, of course, if you're... You know, I, I rarely say this, but if you're a true, true Chelsea fan, you'll always want your players to do well and to develop. Okay, so this meal is important for the staff. With Brentford set piece coach Bernardo Cueva, the latest to join in a series of backroom appointments, and of course Romano's confirmed this as well. Pochettino clarified what Cueva's arrival means for potential set piece department at Chelsea. He, he said this quote: "We have an amazing department of analysis and set piece coaches. Two set piece coaches. We already work with set piece coaches." Of course, the club wants to create a global area of set pieces to reinforce the already settled area in which the two people work. Yeah, Chelsea were kind of like, yeah, it's not putting them on you. This is for the Chelsea network, global, multi-club, women's development team. I wonder if they also wanted to just push that on the first team because, you know, they look at Arsenal and how well Arsenal have done with the set piece coach, and we need to give it. I'm, I, t- I, by the way, totally sign off on this idea, this acquisition, this signing. I think it's excellent. Like the medical staff performance, the club um, created a goalkeeper area of Ben Roberts. The club is trying to reinforce all areas. That is the one area they want to reinforce, move on from, and challenge the people who are here. And that's very, and we are very supportive of that. He says it's interesting to hear him say that now because. Apparently he wasn't too into it early doors. If some people come here and add their knowledge to help us to be better, they are very welcome. Well, at least he's saying that. Good vibes, barbecue, everyone very, very happy. I'll take the set piece coach. Uh, No rebellion here from Poch, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Let me know what you think, though, about Bernardo Cueva, the set piece coach. I think it's very important for top teams to have one now. Do you agree with me? What do you think of this guy? I think it's going to be about 750k compensation, which is probably fine. Um, I don't think staff acquisitions go for financial fair play rules, PSR. I did hear that about because people were speaking about manager sackings and stuff. I have a feeling it's not taken into account but um, i might be wrong uh let me know what you think comment down below on everything i've spoken about uh hopefully you enjoy these types of videos uh in between the office videos um as a little bit of just a variation of content so thanks for joining me um yeah i'm gonna go and have more birthday fun all right peace